Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to be making some fur. And the reason why is because, well, the geometry nodes for hair are incredible to use for all sorts of systems. And I've been using them a bit more lately, so I just want to share some new insights. And we also got to kits, to kitties. So they have a very nice layer of fur. They are Siberian cats, so they have some nice coating. And so I just would like to make that, right? So I may as well just share that with you all as well. So let me just turn on my screencast. Where is it? There it is. And we're going to start off by adding a reference image, right? So hit Shift A, image, a reference. And we have two cats, but I grabbed the picture that I had on my phone, which is this one. Minus 90. So this is the reference. This is what it looks like right now. They are about five and a half months out old. So I'm going to grab my cube modifier subdivide it three times. All right. There we go. And shake that smooth. So I'm not going to make the entire cat head. Of course, I'm not going to create eyes or anything. This is about the fur. This is all about how we create the fur. We can add some ears later uh, because it also has some nice fur. But the eyeball stuff like that, if you really want me to, we can create this entire Siberian cat in another tutorial series, which is fine. But for now, let's just do the fur for the head first, okay? So how do we start this off? Well, I'm not going to use particle systems, because particle systems, if we add some hair and we sculpt the hair, we already right away lose the ability to, let's see, tweak some of those initial values, like the length, the segments, stuff like that. So I'm instead going to use the new system. It's not entirely new anymore because Blender is currently in like 4.0 beta. And, but we can add curve, empty hair. And then we can go to object mode, skill mode, and we can start adding some hairs, right? So the first layer that I want to add is this thin coating in the face, right? So I'm already trying to look at the different kinds of systems that we need. One of them being the face hairs, the short ones. The second one is the slightly longer top hairs and the hairs that are going around the face as well there. And layer three is going to be the bottom coat here. All right, so the actual chin area, the, the, the main spring much of the cat. So let's start with this thin coat first. And what I'm trying to wrap my head around already is the density of the hairs that we're gonna be adding. So usually in the start, I work with the density brush because it adds a very even amount of hairs all around where we draw, right? So you can see that the count max is 100. If we set this distance to, for example, 0.05, you can see that the hairs will always have a minimum distance of 0.05, right? Which is very nice. So the density is something I try to figure out right away because we don't want to oversaturate this with hair, but we also don't want to undersaturate. And what I mean with that is especially around areas like the eyes, you have a very harsh line where the hair starts forming, where they start popping out of the skin, right? And if you have, for example, let's say a minimum distance of 0.1, right? So you can see that we have quite a lot of distance between the hairs. And the only way to fill that up is with an interpolate hairs, duplicate hairs, but they will be scattered in between the hairs and on the outsides as well, because they are scattered around a radius of your hair pretty much. And what happens if you have that around the eyes is they're also going to be popping inwards, right? And that is something that I want to avoid at all costs, right? So the easiest way to do that is to have a particle system around the eyes that is a separate from the rest, right? Because that way, um, you can see, we even have some longer hair there around the eyes and on the bottom, they start um, a bit shorter, I guess. So they can be a different particle system and you can just crank up the density for those places because you want those harsh lines there, right? So if I make this distance 0.01, you can see that they're very close together. And any extra hair that we will add later on will be distributed in between of those hairs, right? With a much smaller radius. And that way we will keep that harsh outline, right? So we don't have the eyes right now. We're not going to be making them as well. But just, just so you know, right? So this initial density, I'm going to keep it quite low anyway. Because, um, well, I, I like having that initial coat to be quite thick. We can always thinning it out later by just setting the density lower, right? And what I mean is if we draw a minimum density, 
right now on this face part of the mesh. We can simply set this to minus and increase the distance a little. So for example, 0 0.05, and it will just subtract the hairs until we have a density of 0.05. It's that easy, right? So let me control that a few times and let's just hit the plus because we want to add density. And I guess we can also do the outer mode. So the density what I'm going to work with is 0 0.01. And I'm going to go to the curve shape and I'm going to set the length to about 0.052, right? So let's say we already get some nice and short hairs. Maybe I want it to be even a bit longer, 0.075. That sounds about right. So now I'm just going to draw in the hairs. But first, we're going to enable the Y mirror symmetry, pretty much, right? So now if I draw left, it will also appear right. Going to make our lives a little bit easier, right? So let's start drawing in the middle. This is going to be where our little face will be right so this is where we will add short hair just like that beautiful 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 and for the top of the head we will need a different system right so you can see right now this looks very even and very already quite dense so this is all we need so we can already start giving this a little bit of shape right so if you go to the groom brush the comb we can actually start combing this entire shape. So the first thing you notice is that our hairs are going through the mesh, which is something that we don't want to happen, right? So what we can do is enable collision. And it's a very tiny button that may be quite hard to find if you're just starting out with this. But it's all the way in the top right. There's this icon. It says use sculpt collision. Click the button. And now when we drag, it's going to stay nicely on top of the mesh, right? So that is very nice. So let's draw some of these shapes in, right? You can see that the hairs are going all over the place. Well, at the nose, they're going pretty much up. Below, below the eyes, they're going to the sides. On the head, they're going up and a bit to the side. And at the chin area, they're going down again, right? So let's try and just follow some of the shapes. So this is going up. Let's just crank down that strength to 0.3. That's a value I like to use. Here we go. This goes up a little bit. Then, for example, we have heads going to the sides more here. This goes down and this goes a bit more to the sides as well. Right. And the rest of it, we can pretty much just smoothen out, interpolate a little bit more, maybe even here a little bit more. So it doesn't have a very harsh kind of split there, for example, there as well. Let's make it a little bit more even. Right, so at some point it's going to be hard because we have symmetry enabled, so just disable that. And then we can just make this a little bit less identical, right? Because no face is that smooth, not even a perfect cat face is that symmetrical, right? So something like this is already looking quite, quite decent, I'd say, right? Nice. So what we have done right now is we pretty much have laid all of those hairs flat on the surface, right? If I go and look at it from an angle, they are pretty much flat on the surface with some hairs sticking out a bit more, right? So we want this all to be a bit more, well, puffy, puffy, puffy is the name. So there's an actual brush for that. It's called the puff, right? And what that does is it will stand each of these hairs up a bit more, right? So for example, if I will draw it up here with a, 0.3 strength and project it, you can see that the hairs are going to be moving away from that initial surface a little bit more, right? And the reason why we avoid them being stuck on the surface is because of the lighting later on. If they are flat on the surface, the lighting is going to make it look like it's going to be um, more of like a flat surface. And if you have glossy hairs, then the reflections are going to look very odd, almost like it is a flat plane. So you want to make sure that there's at least a little bit of puffiness in your hairs, right? Unless you have it groomed in a way where you don't want that to happen. For example, if there's a lot of grease in somebody's hair or the fur is wet, for example, then of course you could make them much more flat, all right? So something like this is perfect to start off with, right? Amazing. Now, what I want to do next is add that second layer and then after that, we will start blending it more together, right? So I'm not going to include these in the same system because I want to treat the top hairs different than I want to treat the face hairs, especially because I want to add some noise and curves in that top head hair. And this pretty much has to be straight and smooth, right? So what I'm going to do is go back to object mode. I'm going to name my first system base hairs. 
There we go. Our second system, so select your initial object, and we're going to call this emitter. Hit Shift A, go to a curve, and go to empty hair once again. So let's name this the, let's say, top and side hair. You know, at least we know what we mean. So just go into sculpt mode once again, and now we can add some more density. Now, the longer your hair gets, the lower the density usually can be, right? If you have a very short hair, like the face here, you need much more hairs to cover the initial skin than when you would have long hair like this on the top or long hair like this on the bottom. So I already tried to lower my density based on how long those hairs will be. And the hairs on the top of the face, the head, will be longer. So I'm going to lower the density slightly to like 0.03 maybe. Let's see how that looks. That is better, right? So we can already start drawing with a little bit of a longer length, right? So I'm going to set the length to 0.2 maybe. And that's maybe a little bit too long, 0.15. Here we go. We can tweak that later. Don't worry too much. And now we can just start drawing in the space where we need this hair to be. Like here. Beautiful. I'm not going to worry too much about the back. Because right now we're focused on getting that initial front um, that front face. So I'm going to draw this on the sides as well. And a little bit on the bottom as well. Because we need some kind of an overlap between the short hair that you would have on the chin. And the long hair in which it grows. Right, so we want this to be like an in-between layer, pretty much. I'm going to draw this all around the head, just like that. And maybe even with a little bit more of an overlap in the actual face area. All right. That's the best way to create an overlap or a smooth transition between systems is to have them overlap nicely. All right, and now we can go to the shrink brush or grow shrink. We can set this to minus, set the strength to 0.3 again. And now we can shrink some of these hairs down on where they meet the actual particle systems, right? So let's actually just enable that Y symmetry for now. And there we go. Shrink that down a little bit. Shrink it here a bit as well. Because this is going to be the transition area. So is this. Here we go. Beautiful. Now for the top parts, I even want them to be a little bit longer, right? So especially here at the little tip of the head, I want the hairs to be a bit longer so we can groom that a little bit better later on as well. Right, so this is going to be fine. I usually set this to projected because I like a bit more as it works more straightforward, like which hairs are going to be moving with the brush. Something like this, I guess. Beautiful. And for the sides, I want this to be longer as well, right? You have, you see like those hairs sticking out on the sides and we're going to be making that as well. So I'm going to make all of this sides a little bit longer. Here we go. Beautiful. And maybe here on the chin area as well, because that is going to be the transition part, right? Right there. Beautiful. So next up, we can start grooming this a little bit. And let's go to the comb brush. And let's just groom our little cheek hairs and our chin hairs. There we go. Make it look a little bit like a groomed cat, right? Something like that. And um, if you can't for some reason, groom all of the hairs, just set it to project it and you'll be able to do it. And something like that. Now, I already want to bring some kind of roughness in the hairs just by pushing, for example, this part up and this part more down, right? Just to add some randomness right from the start. We can do it with the geometry nodes, but I already want some manual placements of those random hairs because I enjoy doing it and I like having some control of, for example, the curve in here. Like that. And this one as well. I want this to point more up. And I'll already create some kind of a noisy feel of that hair there. That looks quite nice. There we go. Beautiful. So let's look at it from let's look at it from the side as well, because right now we have a good looking front view, but the side view usually looks very boring at that point, right? So you can see and uh, we didn't do any side work yet. So let's just do that right now. I'm going to make this go up and to the side a little bit like that. Something like this. And I already add some noise, of course. And you change the brush size with F, right? So F and just move your mouse and you will see the circle go up and down. And that will basically mean the size of your brush. So this goes down, of course. Something like this. 
and then this can go a little bit more back. There we go. So more roughness, more roughness. Here we go, beautiful. And now we have quite a decent profile from our sides, I guess. Right, so maybe just from the top view, the sides may be a little bit odd. So let's fix that. Make it a bit more random as well. Here we go. And that is pretty much it for this part, right? Later on, we will come back to that. Let's save this as fur. And now let's just start already adding the third system as well. So let's select our initial object, which is the emitter. Shift A, curve, empty hair. So this is going to be our long hair system. So let's continue and set the density brush with the curve shape to be much longer for that chin area, right? So this is going to be like 0.3. Now, when this kitty is fully grown, those hairs will be even longer. But right now, he's not fully fully developed yet, right? So this is still not quite as long as it will be. One meter is a little bit long, maybe 0.75. There we go. So let's draw in a nice area of that we can use to draw in this thick fur coat on the neck. So right there is where I want that to be. And maybe even a bit more to the sides there because we're going to be grooming this down a bit. So make sure it overlaps slightly. There we go. Here as well. And that is looking like quite the decent layer of hair. Maybe a bit more to the front here as well. There we go. Beautiful. So how do we now make this work beautiful? Well, easy. We groom, we groom, we groom. So let's start off with that, right? So let's first move this down and let me enable the Y symmetry again. And let's set this to project it. It already was. So let's move all of this down a little bit. This as well. And something like this already looks quite decent, right? So for the, the neckline, we, of course, don't have a neck. We also don't have a chest area. So we have to stop the hairs at some point. So we're going to make up the shape of that and make it nice and noisy, I guess, something like this. And let's add some initial curves in here as well. Right, so you can see that there is some curling going on here and a lot of clumping as well. So that is something that we have to achieve later on as well. And something like this looks quite nice. Maybe this goes a bit more to the sides and up as well, right? Because we have to, of course, transition that later on. And let's go to the side view, of course, see how that looks, which is numpad one. And let's move all of this a little bit more down. You know, we have gravity in place. No long hairs are going to stick out as much like that. Something like this. Looks decent. All right, so if you think your hair needs to be longer at some parts or you want just some freedom to drag it out or make some longer hairs at some point, just grab the snake hook and you can just drag those hairs out, for example, like that and like this. All right, so you can make them longer and more noisy on the spot. Set it to project it, that may work even better. Here we go, All right? So drag them out just like that. Beautiful. Now maybe this as well, drag it out a little bit, beautiful, just like that, All right? So we can also drag these ones out on the side a little bit, beautiful, All right? So let's actually sculpt this and let's make this look a little bit more even like that. And now we can go to the comb brush and just recomb that a little bit more, All right? So we remove a little bit of the chaos. And I'm also going to disable the Y symmetry for a second and work on this bottom patch because I didn't like the way it was symmetrized right there. Something like this works much better, I think. All right, so now I'm going to go to object mode and I'm going to go back to my second layer, the top and sides. And I'm going to go to skill mode and I'm going to try to work this a little bit more in the actual shape that I want it to be, right? Those sides here, I want this to transition beautifully. So I'm going to grab the comb brush. And I'm going to comb this down a little bit, right? So this is the hair that's actually going to transition in a longer hair as well. So we need some kind of a downflow there to interact with that part, right? And maybe even go a little bit more to the front. Something like this. So that already shows much more of a transition area between those hairs. All right, so that is not too bad. Let's see how it looks from the front. If we go to object mode and let's even go to rendered view and set this to cycles. 
right? So you can already tell more of how it's gonna look in the end. Right, so that has been part one of this tutorial. In the next one, we'll be looking at adding the geometry node setups, adding the details, adding more hairs, making them look more realistic in general. So I hope to see you in that one. And for now, thank you so much. Please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. Any one of those will make me happy. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.